So it's official. Tyson Fury will fight Otto Wallen on September 14th in Las Vegas. Now, my initial reaction when this news first broke a couple hours ago is that Tyson Fury has somehow gone and found himself another Tom Schwartz. <laughs> that was my initial reaction. But to be honest, I was being facetious. I put up a post in my boxing group on Facebook. I was being a little facetious. I haven't actually looked at Otto while in fight, so let me give him the benefit of the doubt. He might be a lot better than Tom Schwartz. He might be a real decent heavyweight for all I know. Okay, I need to go and do my due diligence just like I did with Tom Schwartz and reserve judgment until I've you know watched him uh, fight multiple times. But what I can tell you about him, this is him here. He is a 28-year-old Swedish heavyweight, 6'5 and a half, 78-inch reach. He's currently 20 and 0 with 13 KOs. Most of his fights have been in Switzerland, Germany, and Sweden. Sweden obviously is not known as a place that produces a lot of great heavyweights. Of course, in the early part of the 20th century, they did have Ingemar Johansson, who was heavyweight champion. But since then, Swedish heavyweights and Swedish professional boxers have been very thin on the ground. They did have a Swedish heavyweight fringe contender in the 90s called Attila Levin. And I can see here that the manager of Otto Wallen is a guy called Zachary Levin. So I'm wondering if that's any relation to Attila Levin. I watched, you know, many of Attila Levin's fights back in the days. And their most notable fighter in recent years, Sweden, has been Badu Jack, obviously, who's done very well. You know, he's a very, very good fighter. But for the most part, Sweden, not the strongest country when it comes to producing professional boxers. Boxing was actually banned in Sweden for a number of years. But they lifted that ban, I think, about 10 years ago or so, something like that. So, yeah, I'm going to do my due diligence on Otto Wallen. Have a look at the guy. He's a Southpaw. Um, see whether or not there's any kind of talent there. At the end of the day, he hasn't fought anybody of note. So, until he's tested, we won't really know what he has. Okay? But as with Tom Schwartz, Schwartz hadn't fought anybody of note. But as soon as I saw that Senad Gashi fight, I knew that this was a really poor opponent for Tyson Fury because if you're trying to quit in the second round against Senad Gashi of all people there is just no way in hell you're going to get in there and trouble Tyson Fury that's not happening you're going to need a lot more heart and spirit than that so hopefully I don't find anything as disturbing as that in Otto Wallen's uh, fight footage any of it that I can find on YouTube hopefully I don't find anything that disturbing did I mention he's promoted by Salita? That's interesting. Um, look, Tyson Fury running around calling himself the best fighter in the division, the lineal champion and all this kind of business. I'm not going to trash Otto Wallen just yet until I've you know, checked out what he's actually like as a fighter from the fights he's been in. But what I can say is you would expect somebody who calls themselves the best who's constantly banging on about how they're the lineal champion and the true champion, you would expect them, or you would at least hope, for them to come up with an opponent that we at least know. Someone who at least has some familiar names on their record. You know, a known quantity, an opponent who we know what we're getting with. But Tyson Fury has chosen an obscure, that's what this guy is, an obscure Swedish heavyweight. Just as Tom Schwartz was an obscure German heavyweight, now he's chosen an obscure Swedish heavyweight. I would have preferred Charles Martin, to be honest, because at least we know what we're getting with Charles Martin. We don't have anything to gauge Fury's performance against Otto Wallen against. If he goes in there and smashes Wallen to pieces, well, did he just beat up a good fighter or did he just beat up a, a Euro bomb? We, we won't know, you know, but at least with Charles Martin, we know that Fairly recently, he was in against Kaunaki, who's one of the, you know, up and coming contenders in the top 10. And that was a good fight between Charles Martin and Kaunaki. That wasn't an easy fight for Kaunaki. He got himself buzzed several times in that fight by Charles Martin in the late rounds. 
So, yeah, Martin is not the greatest heavyweight at all, but he'll, he'll probably give it a go. And we know that he was tough enough to go a, a, a real hard 10 rounds with Kaunaki recently. So there's a measuring stick there. If Fury was able to just blast Charles Martin out in a couple rounds, well, he's he's uh, managed to emulate what AJ's done and he's obviously bettered what Kaunaki has done recent. But again, with Wallen, there's no yardstick. You know, we, we don't know how good Wallen is. But as I say, I'm going to go and have a look at him and try and glean whatever I can from these particular performances. And one thing I can tell you right away, which is interesting, is how light Otto Wallen is. Now, of course, we've got Deontay Wilder, who's 6'7", and has weighed as little as, what, 213 for some fights. Otto Wallen, 6'5 and a half, 227. I mean, this guy at 6'5 and a half weighs less than Oscar Rivas, who's about six feet tall. So, you know, interesting there. Weighing in the, in the mid, well, actually from the low 220s to the low 230s, it appears well, a couple of times the high 230s for Otto Wallen. But yeah, it doesn't appear to be the physically biggest guy, maybe similar to a Huey Fury where he's tall, but not particularly uh, thick set. So yeah, let me have a, a, a study <laughs> of some of this guy's fights and then I'll give you a better assessment on who this guy is and whether he stands any chance at all against the Gypsy King. So if any of you have watched Otto Wallen, give me your assessment. Do you think he's any good at all? Do you think he'll be useful in the top 10, not necessarily against Tyson Fury, but against any of the other guys? Are you disappointed by this choice of opponent for Fury? It, it, to me, it is a little curious because they'd been saying that they wanted an American opponent, which makes sense to me, right? Because they're trying to sell Tyson Fury to the American market. You know, ESPN, ESPN are trying to recoup. So to me, an American opponent makes perfect sense. You know, a Charles Martin, a Jarrell Miller, even a Trevor Bryan. But an Otto Wallen? What's that all about? I just don't get it. If you can make sense of it, please enlighten me because I don't understand it. Um, is this an indication that the Fury Wilder fight is not as close to happening as some people might have you believe? And the reason I say that is because putting him in with an Otto Wallen to me suggests that they've got a more long-term plan with Tyson Fury. You know, rather than just slinging him in with Wilder again, sooner rather than later, in which case an American opponent would be as, almost essential oh, for September. The fact they've chosen another obscure European opponent, maybe that there isn't this rush to get him in the ring with Deontay Wilder in the early part of 2020. Maybe they're going to take their time and maybe he's going to have another fight after the Otto Wallen fight before he fights Wilder or before he steps up against any serious contender or champion in uh, you know the heavyweight division. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this latest development in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about two pounds a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalog of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.